Hold on to your coattails. Today, we're investigating the death of Abraham Lincoln. Hello, everyone. My name is Allison, and I am here in the Ripley's warehouse today with all of these artifacts for you. You guys loved our last Abe Lincoln episode so much that we had to give you a follow up. So let's start with this one here. Let me get this open for the big reveal. Now, this is one of John Wilkes Booth's guns. Let me give you guys a closer look. Up close, you can really see all the wooden carvings on this. A lot of detail for such an itty bitty gun. And the most interesting part, in my opinion, you can see his name inscribed right there on the handle. Now, this is the gun that fell out of Wilkes Booth's pocket after he shot Lincoln in the theater. But interestingly enough, historians don't believe that this was the gun that actually killed Lincoln. When Booth was found hiding in a farmhouse in Virginia after the assassination, a second matching gun was found in his pocket. This is the weapon believed to have killed Abraham Lincoln. This was confirmed 106 years later after the inside of both guns were tested and the one inside of his pocket was confirmed to match the one inside of Lincoln's head. Besides the controversy over which gun killed him, there have been a ton of other conspiracies surrounding his death. One of which is, where was the Secret Service when this happened? Well, ironically, he had just signed the bill creating the Secret Service the day before he was killed. And his bodyguard? He decided to make a stop at the saloon during intermission and never came back. Now, you may be wondering, where was he taken after he was shot? Well, he ended up being taken to a nearby boarding house across the street where he was looked after by doctors and loved ones until he eventually passed away. This brings us to our next two objects. And for the rest of our artifacts here, I have a clipping of the president's hair taken post-mortem, as well as a clipping of the bed sheet that he died on. Um, also, I have this little neat matchbook art here that I just thought was kind of cool, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, but let me get these out of the way to make room for this big old picture frame. Now, it may seem pretty morbid to take a clipping of someone's hair after they died, but it was actually pretty common back in Victorian times. They often did this to put into jewelry to remember the deceased, and in this case, the physician taking care of his body after he died took many clippings of his hair and gave them away to people, so they had something to remember him by. And for the bedsheet clipping, well, it was said that the person who was staying in the room that Lincoln died in came home the next day completely hungover and passed out on the blood-soaked sheets. He then wrote a letter to his sister telling her of what happened and said that he had a piece of his hair as well as the bedsheet that he died on. Kind of morbid, but I don't know, things were different back then, I guess. Um, this is probably not that same bit of fabric, but it is from that same bed that he died on. And you can kind of see here where the blood is soaked into the sheets. Kind of, uh, kind of eerie, kind of strange. Um, but this is what I got for you guys today. Do you have any more questions about the conspiracies surrounding the Lincoln assassination? Leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some investigating. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.